Welcome to Heroes 2, The Making of the Game. My name is Vanessa Pizzuto, and today we are talking to Jada Facio about what goes behind the scene. Everything you need to do if you want to build a game from scratch. Hi, Vanessa. Hi, it's so good to have you with us. Thank you. Pleasure. So before we dive into Heroes, tell me a little bit about yourself, who you are, where you are, what you do. Right, so my name is Jada. I live in London, although I'm Brazilian. I've been in London for the past 13 years. I call this place home now, despite the weather. <laughs> <laughs> um, and... Um, I, um, I'm a software engineer by trade. Um, in the past few years, I've, I've also uh, moved towards what we call solution architecture, which is going one step above uh, software engineering, where you're looking at an entire solution or various different pieces of software working together. Um, and this is now the capacity on which I operate um, on the Heroes project. Heroes 2 specifically. All right. But before we go into Heroes 2, tell me how you got involved with Heroes 1. The game, the first one. Right. Yeah, that, that's that's an interesting story. I, I remember Pastor Sam one day coming to me and um, and saying, you know, what if what, what if we created a, a Bible game? You know, why don't we create a Bible game? And um, and we had, you know, he, he usually used to sketch his ideas on paper. You know, he loved pen and paper, just used to draw these little screens. And it's like, we could do this and we could create a quiz game and we could create competitions, you know. And it's interesting because a lot of the ideas that he had for Heroes 1, they're only now coming to fruition. It takes years to, to yeah, actually make something really happen, you know, like things like multiplayer and so so much uh, like that. So um, we started out with that idea. What I usually do uh, is I, I look at ideas that, you know, people have for, for, for applications um, and I then try to find the right pieces of technology that can, can work to make that a reality, right? Uh, so a lot of what solution architecture is is essentially that. So uh, we started planning out the project. Um, we got my cousin involved, who's also a developer in Brazil, Julio. And, um, and we started coding the first version of Heroes. All right, you make it sound as, as if this was the easiest thing on earth. We just coded the game. <laughs> so <laughs> you're the tech guy who coded the game, like who put the brain together of the game. I know nothing about code. So tell me, how long does it take to create the code for a game like Heroes, Heroes 1, the first version? Well, it depends on how many times Pastor Sam changes his mind about what he actually wants. <laughs> He's going right. to this. <laughs> but, yeah, it, it really depends because, you know, what happens a lot when you're, when you're developing software is you think you want something and then you start developing it and you put it in front of people, usually, you know, a small group of people that are testing right. the game, you know, in a closed beta. Um, and you realize actually this doesn't work or we need to change mm -hmm. this. And the changes are really what inflates the project, right? So creating simple ideas and code can take anything from, you know, a couple of days to even sometimes in, a, in, a, in very simple cases, a few hours, you can, you can put something together. Um, but usually around three months, you can have like a rough beta that you can start testing and, and playing around with, or at least testing some elements of. Uh, with Heroes, I can't remember exactly because I'm terrible with dates, but I think it took us um, six months to actually have the very first uh, draft version of it. But I remember it was much quicker right. than, than Heroes 2. Um, Heroes 2 is much more complex as well. We you know, have a it's lot It involves more new things, that's an ad. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. multiplayer, how difficult exactly. to do that? Yeah, multiplayer was uh, was an interesting one. It's something that we had dreamed, you know, dreamed very early on in Heroes One. We wanted to do it for Heroes One, but obviously it's a massive uh, piece of technology that you know to develop, and and there's lots of challenges there. And back then the technology wasn't where where it is now. It's much easier to develop something like multiplayer today because we have things like Firebase. Google has created lots of products. The cloud has evolved massively. I'm so smiling, pretending that I know what all this means. <laughs> All this software. It's, it's very simple, right? So, so Firebase is like this um, this cloud database um, that allows you to to do things like real time database. So, if something changes, you know, it can automatically update the app, modify. Uh, so, you know, mm -hmm. Yeah. 
So these are very complex uh, uh, technical problems to solve in a project. And we get a lot of that for free already because of this cloud infrastructure, right? So because, and this is the, the, the beauty of, of evolution in technology, every few years you have these massive steps forward that the entire yeah. industry takes because you have engineers working within companies that are solving very complex problems and then making it available as a product that other people can just plug in and use. And that just advances everyone forward because it, it, it reduces the, the, the entry barrier, right? So that means right. that something that before, you know, only a very large game studio with millions of pounds or, or dollars of, of investment could do, um, can now be done by a very small, you know, game studio. You can achieve And I was this. going to ask you that, you know, how many people you normally need to develop a game like this and how many people you actually have working on this? Right, yeah. <laughs> so so for Heroes, um, we we probably needed twice as many as we have, but yeah. that is good and we, <laughs> we work very hard and we've managed to do it with one developer. Wow. Myself. I'm talking specifically about the development part. Obviously, you know, yeah. there's other areas like design, yes, of course. music, yeah. you know, you know, huge. But development specifically was just uh, Julio, my cousin, uh, working again on on the development, and myself as a as a solutions architect, looking at the, the higher level components and putting everything together. Wow! So tell me now about your role for Heroes 2, the second version, what is it that you're doing now that is different from before and what is adding to the project? Yeah, so so I think before, I, obviously with Heroes 1, I was more involved with the programming side of things. So actually programming pro programming the game engine uh, along with my cousin, we didn't use a game engine for, for Heroes 1. Um, so uh, with Heroes 2, we wanted to learn from, you know, from those uh, mistakes, if you will, and uh, you know, it, and, and essentially <laughs> sure. make, better, make better choices, you know, um, so that we could deliver something quicker, higher quality. Um, we really wanted to go all out. So my role has transitioned from uh, development more into looking at the entire solution um, and and figuring out how we could use all of these different pieces of technology to actually develop everything that we had dreamt up, right? So things like multiplayer. What are we going to use? Are we going to use Firebase? Are we going to deploy something? to the cloud that is completely custom that we develop from scratch. Um, and, and, and making those decisions allows us to then cut the right corners without also making terrible mistakes when we're cutting corners, which is you know the, the trade-off that you need to always make. Cutting the right corners to keep yeah. it cost-effective and yet high quality, amazing quality. Awesome. I want to ask you also about safety. Am I correct to assume that part of your role involves making sure that the data is safe. How do you manage that? Yeah, so um, we do this through a combination of what we call cryptography and um, and data validation. So it primarily involves um, <clears throat> sorry. So it primarily involves uh, making sure that the data is not open and available. If you crack into the app, for example, so a hacker won't be, won't be able to come and steal it. That's right. You can't just go in and, and fetch the, the 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 questions and the answers because if, if we allow that to happen, then the game would just become, you know, kind of pointless. So we want to protect. It's not just about protecting the game itself because, you know, we. it's about protecting the fun of the game, right? It's about ensuring yeah. that everybody can go and play and have fun and that people are not cheating the game. Um, so we use a, a series of, of different techniques um, to protect the data, to ensure that people can't cheat the game. Um, and, yeah, and, and if there are security um uh, personnel, you know, yeah, and, yeah. and I, I invite you know if if there's security people out there that want to look into the game and maybe find loopholes, we're always you know we always welcome you know a second pair of eyes um, and and people telling us you know about potential issues so that we can improve as well uh, and, and make, make it better. Yeah. This yeah. is a perfect segue. I don't know if you did it on purpose, but this is perfect because <laughs> I wanted to ask you about the beta version. As I said, I'm a newbie in in this gamers world and I only recently discovered that after you go through the whole process of developing a game then you have something called a beta version for mm -hmm. testing tell me how this works yeah so a beta is usually a phase of, of the development where we have done the minimum amount of work that, that we think needed to be done before we can put the game in front of people because as we're developing it it's very rough right there's very yeah. weird things that happen, there's bugs. So we're refining that and we go through that refinement process. So beta is the minimum that we think 
is necessary for the product to be ready to be put in front of people. Um, and, and, and what that usually means is it's not ready to go public yet for everyone, but it's, it's, it's ready to go in front of a small group of people, relatively small group of people that are willing to test it and report bugs to us so that we can then go and fix them ahead of the final, you know, public launch. Really? Uh, that's what a beta uh, process so is. So this is random people like me and other people downloading this version, playing it and then sending you comments saying, hey, I like this or this didn't work, something like that. That's right. Yeah. Early reactions, any issues that you find, you know, and, and then we use that to refine the game. Absolutely. Absolutely. So what are your dreams for the future? I know that we're still waiting to release Heroes 2, but when Heroes 3 comes, what would you like to see in the new version? Right. So um, I can't reveal too much about our future plans <laughs> because I'm sure that, um, you know, we want to keep some of that um, secret to surprise people, but there's massive plans for, you know, for, for what's going to happen after Heroes 2. Um, and I think all I'm going to say is more 3D stuff. That's, that's Ooh, all. <laughs> I love it. I already love the design. I think the characters, they are absolutely beautiful. I think it adds an element of quality and beauty to the game that cannot be understated. It's, it's fantastic. I know a lot of work has gone into that. So I want to say thank you. Thank you very much. And so wrapping up, I have one question for you. What is the one thing you would like people like me who don't know anything about gaming to understand about the process that went behind making this game? Well, when you see the game in front of you, realize that there's a lot of work that went into it. It's very complex work, um, a lot of planning, a lot of late night coding sessions and, 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 and meetings and discussions and decisions that have been made is thousands and thousands and thousands of those, right? Um, so I guess enjoy, you know, that's, that's, uh, that's what we can say. I mean, we put a lot of work into it. All we want people to do is to enjoy it and to have fun and to learn something new with it. And, and that's, that's what brings us the most joy, right? To know that all of the effort um, is, is being enjoyed by the people that are playing the game. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jader. It's been a pleasure talking to you today. Likewise. Thank you, Vanessa.